Okay, so in this video, we are going to look a little bit more at gender, um, or specifically how our gender identity um, develops. Um, so, as I mentioned before, gender or gender identity is our, our mental state or our inner sense of maleness or femaleness, um, or in other words, our psychological awareness of being male or female. Now, we know based on research that this usually develops by around age three. So basically around age three, a child tends to have a strong sense of being either a boy or a girl. Now, what we don't know completely is how that develops. Is it nature or nurture? So is it biology that determines our gender identity or is it the environment that we are raised in? Now, what you see is that gender identity is almost always consistent with one's biological sex. However, that does not necessarily prove that gender identity is biologically determined. Um, people are also usually reared in accordance with their sexual anatomy, and so that might then influence gender identity. So in other words, um, if a, a, a child is born with... Um, is born as a male, most parents are going to raise their child as a boy, and that might then influence their gender identity. Um, and so to kind of pull this question apart, research has looked at children who are born with ambiguous genitalia. Um, so for example, uh, they might have chromosomes of a boy, but the genitalia of a girl. So they've looked at intersex individuals. Um, and in those cases, what they've found is that the child usually develops a gender identity consistent with the gender they are assigned at birth and raised as. Um, so even if the child has the chromosomes of a boy, if they have the genitalia of a girl and the parents decide to assign a female gender, um, the, and they raise her as a female, then you tend to see that the child will develop a female gender identity despite having male genetics. Ultimately, most psychologists agree that both nature and nurture play a role um, in the development of gender identity, but as this evidence is suggesting, um, a big part of gender identity seems to be learned okay, from our environment. Um, that then raises the question, how do we learn what it means to be a boy or a girl? Which brings us to gender roles. So gender roles are the collection of actions, beliefs, and characteristics that a culture associates with masculinity and femininity. Okay? Basically the masculine and feminine stereotypes within a culture, um, which means each culture has its own idea of gender roles. It varies. In our culture, in Western cultures, if we think about the traits we tend to associate with a stereotypical woman, um, we think might think of things like them being nurturing, being gentle, um, more dependent on other people, emotional, helpful, more patient, submissive. Now, if you're sitting here shaking your head and getting angry with me um, thinking not all women are like that, I agree. I 100% agree. But these are the stereotypes that our culture holds towards women. Um, and then on the other side, if we look at the typical traits that we associate with a stereotypical man, we all think of things like them being tough, self-reliant, independent, dominant, protective. Again, not all men are like that, um, but th that's the stereotype that we hold. And the reason we have those stereotypes is because once, a once upon a time, most men and women probably did fit these stereotypes or at least conform to them. Um, most of us can probably agree that these ways of looking at men and women are not actually how men and women are nowadays, but we still hold these stereotypes. Um, and as we grow up and socialize, we learn to conform to these gender roles. They guide how we should look, how we should behave, um, the types of jobs we should have, how we should so so socialize. Um, but then the next question is, how do we actually, as children, learn to adopt these gender roles? Um, now, one thing I want I, I want to note is that you you tend to see um, this understanding of gender roles again by around age two or three, around the same age that children are developing the ability to differentiate between boys and girls. Um, actually, when I so the two girls I babysit, the younger one who's about to turn five, um, when she again was about two or three. 
that I really remember her developing this understanding of being a boy or a girl because all of a sudden she was fascinated with boys. Um, I remember taking her to Starbucks and she just developed this understanding that boys were different from her. Um, and she saw this boy and she was fascinated by him. She just wanted to stare at him the whole time. Um, and then as we were walking back from Starbucks, uh, a little boy went by on his bike and the first thing she shouted out was, that's a boy, that's a boy. Um, so again, this is developing around age two or three. They suddenly have this understanding that there are boys and there are girls and we have these expectations associated with being a boy or a girl. Boys are expected to, to be a certain way and girls are expected to be a certain way. Now, in terms of where they're learning this and how this is developing, it comes down to primarily operational, sorry, observational learning and operant conditioning. Um, so observational learning, when children observe, well, sorry, as children are growing up, they observe people of the same gender and they will model their behavior. So they will look to, the little girls will look to other girls and women to understand how they're expected to behave. And little boys will look to other boys and men. Um, but obviously the, the main uh, way we see observational learning occurring is through the media. Um, this really provides evidence of, of, of this developing at this age because this is the age when children start watching TV and they start wanting to be like their favorite characters. And what you see is that many little girls will go through this princess stage because that's what they're observing on TV. So they want to wear pretty dresses, they want to engage in pretend play where they're pretending to be princesses. Um, whereas boys want to run around and be superheroes because that's what they see other male characters doing on TV. So TV and movies is a, a huge way that as children, we learn what is expected of being a male or a female. And we start to adapt to those roles. Um, another example from babysitting that I have, the older one who's now seven, I think it was her, her fourth birthday party. Um, you really see this, a, a child incorporating the gender roles that she is learning because up until this point she had been obsessed with dinosaurs everything was dinosaurs um, which is stereotypically more male but at the same time she was also fascinated by Elsa from Frozen this when Frozen was coming out and this was um a big deal for her and so for her fourth birthday she wanted to be Elsa she wanted to have a princess party understanding that as a girl all of her friends wanted to be princesses and that's what was kind of the thing to do um, but she wasn't she didn't want to give up that other part of herself um, she wanted to be a princess she wanted to be Elsa she wanted a pretty dress but she also wanted to be a dinosaur so she ended up having her pretty dress her Elsa dress with a dinosaur tail and a dinosaur mask um, and I thought that was a great example of a child going through this transition of understanding there were certain expectations of her as a female um, and incorporating that into her existing sense of self and interests. Um, moving on to operant conditioning. So gender appropriate behaviors are usually reinforced, um, which increases those gender typical behaviors. So what I mean by this is children often receive praise or some form of reinforcement for behaviors that are seen as gender appropriate. So this might be, you know, parents telling boys that men don't cry um, or that boys don't play with dolls. It, you see this where uh, parents might talk more to girls, but then they'll engage in more rough play with boys. Um, they might encourage girls to play house by buying them toy kitchens and dolls, but they'll buy boys footballs and toy cars. Um, so through their actions, they are reinforcing gender appropriate behaviors. And that's another way that children learn, oh, this is how I'm expected to behave. This is what I'm expected to play with because these are the toys I'm being bought. Um, or this is what my parents are teaching me. Now, we've previously spoken about schemas, which are um, our mental representations um, that guide how we see the world and our understanding of the world. Now, Gender schema theory is a theory that emphasizes the importance of cognitive, cognitive factors such as schemas in the development of gender role behavior. 
So basically it suggests that as children watch and learn how different genders behave, they start to form gender schemas, which are these mental guidelines for how to be masculine or feminine. Um, so gender roles are the stereotypes that we associate with, uh, with being masculine and feminine. Gender schemas um, are the actual mental guidelines that we that guide our behavior and guide us in, in how to be masculine or feminine. Um, remember that schemas are the ways that we organize knowledge and kind of act as a kind of lens that we see the world through. Um, so as we're developing this schema of being a male or a female that influences the way that we interact and see the world, sorry, see and interact um, with the world. Um, so these guidelines incorporate things such as, you know, the typical way to dress as, be, as a male or a female, the types of toys to play with, the behaviors to engage in, um, different social roles um, that are considered appropriate for boys and girls or, or men and women. Um, and these, uh, ske this, these schemas basically influence our behavior. Children will start to behave in ways that are expected of their gender. Now, again, around age three is when you start to see that children have usually developed a gender schema for toys. So studies show that they will recognize trucks as being a boy's toy and dolls as being a girl's toy by around age three. Um, but not only do gender schemas influence what children associate with being a boy or a girl, they also influence what they are able to recall about certain events. So it influences their memory. So one study in this area um, demonstrated that boys were better able to recall cars and trucks that had been shown earlier, whereas girls were better able, um, were better at recalling dolls they had previously seen. The other thing that, that we see is gender schemas are um, often used as a reference for evaluating our self-worth, um, especially in children. Um, so that they tend to judge themselves positively if they feel like they measure up to the traits they see as important to their gender, or they might judge themselves negatively when they don't. Um, so for example, a boy's self-esteem might be affected when they feel that they're not as strong or aggressive as other boys. Um, now what research shows is that among pre-adolescents, so among um, children about to go into adolescence, perceiving oneself as being typical of one's gender is associated with better psychological adjustment. So viewing yourself as, um, as having the stereotypical traits of your gender um, or feeling typical of your gender is connected to your overall psychological well-being. Um, the more you feel typical of your gender, the better your psychological well-being seems to be.